Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, the answer is the binomial theorem. And the binomial theorem is pretty sophisticated mathematics. Uh, conceptually, um, it's pretty easy to understand, but the mechanics of doing more complicated problems uh, with the binomial theorem can get kind of dicey. And if you're uh, studying the binomial theorem, you're likely in a course like uh, pre-calculus, algebra two, college algebra. So if you're struggling with it or if you're kind of confused with it, that's totally normal. And what I'm gonna try to do is give you a quick introduction um, to the binomial theorem. And then we'll talk about when you need to use this formula. Okay, now this is pretty uh, you know, complicated and it's pretty involved. And again, the binomial theorem uh, the problems, you can start off with basic problems, but then the problems can get much more challenging. So what we want to do here in this video is just establish a good foundation of what the bin binomial theorem is, and then just kind of build up your knowledge base from there. Then I'm going to give you some suggestions on this formula and some other things about the binomial theorem that you're probably going to be interested in knowing. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, let me just tell you very briefly about my math help program. And of course, you can find the link to this in the description of my um, uh, video here. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I teach the binomial theorem uh, thoroughly in my pre-calculus course. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're studying any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Back in Place, or ALEX, teacher certification exam, you kind of get the idea. If you're taking a test that has math on it, I can help you out. And I also have a great homeschool program. Uh, one quick thing, I've been teaching math for decades, and I have to say the most, one of the most important things that I see from students in terms of whether they're going to be successful in math or not is their notes. Take a hard look at your notes, okay? If they're not super awesome, then you need to improve your notes, okay? They need to be as perfect as you possibly can because things like, you know, the binomial theorem, you have to write things down. You need your notes to study from, okay? But uh, as you're improving in your note-taking, you can use my notes. If you're interested, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video as well. All right, so let's get into the binomial theorem. Um, kind of assuming some of you out there probably have a basic idea of what this is about, and obviously... It's about a binomial, right? So we're talking about binomials, and then we are talking about a theorem. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's just review in algebra what is a, bino a binomial. Well, a binomial is a thing like this, okay? It has two uh, terms uh, to it. It's a polynomial of two terms. So like simple ones would be like a plus b or x plus y. These are binomials, okay? So we can have like 2x plus uh, h is a binomial. So we're talking about two, two terms uh, connected with an addition sign or, or subtraction sign. And then, um, so that's basically what we're talking about. That's a binomial. But what is the theorem part? Well, what we're talking about really is expanding a binomial. In other words, taking a binomial to a particular power. So if I have like x plus y squared, Okay, I can go, well, that's just going to be x plus y times x plus y. And then I can go ahead and do all the FOIL uh, math. And you should be familiar with FOIL. Hopefully you are. If you remember your basic algebra, you can go first, outer, inner, last, add them all up. And then you would have uh, found the product. Okay, you would have taken this binomial to um, the second power. So that's, a, you know, not that much work. But if I'm going to take x plus y to the seventh power, now that is a huge amount of work. So I got to multiply x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. You get the idea, right? I'm going to have to multiply these guys together seven times. Now that is an extensive amount of work. And that's where the binomial theorem comes to the rescue, right? Now just imagine here I have x plus y to the seventh. But what if I had like 2m to the uh, n to the 25th power, okay? That is a crazy amount of work. And if you don't have the binomial theorem handy, this is just going to probably take you about three days. You know, you're gonna go through several pizzas and maybe uh, cups of coffee. If you are a coffee drinker, you get the idea. Nobody wants to do that kind of torturous calculations. So that's why it's just better for us to understand the binomial theorem, right? So don't 
dismiss it, but going, well, listen, if I'm going to go X plus Y to the third power, I don't need to know the binomial theorem because I don't mind doing this amount of work. And okay, I could be like, all right, yeah, you could do that amount of work and you would get the same answer as the binomial theorem for this particular problem, but not this one. This is a huge amount of work. Bottom line is you need to know this stuff because you're going to be testing on it pretty thoroughly. And before we... um go any further let me just uh, tell you right off the bat this is going to be an introduction to the binomial theorem uh, because you this is a lot of material okay the binomial theorem it seems kind of maybe uh, like obvious it's just like one theorem you learn not really there's a lot of stuff that's kind of like involved with really mastering the binomial theorem okay and i'm not going to be cover uh, be able to cover all those advanced type of problems you want to check out like my pre-calculus course in my math help program i get into everything really heavy duty okay so this again this is just a good solid introduction um, about the binomial theorem all right so here let's go back to our problem here x plus uh, y to the seventh power so if you notice i have the answer written down here okay so this is the answer x plus y to the seventh it's one x to the 7th plus 7x to the 6th, y plus 21x uh, to the 5th, uh, y. You can just see the answer. I'm not going to uh, read all these terms uh, here. But let's just take a look at the pattern because the binomial theorem generates a pattern that we can kind of follow. Okay, And I'm going to show you that here in a second. So our first term okay, here is... 1x to the seventh. So you can see here in my binomial, I have an x and a y. All right. Then here, my next coefficient is 7x to the sixth, y to the first. Okay. So it's interesting. 6 plus 1, it's still a 7. Okay. I'm just adding up these exponents. Then I have a 21. I have x to the fifth, y squared. All right, so it looks like the x, x powers are going down. I'm starting with x to the 7th. Okay, I'm taking this to the highest power, that's 7. And now, every time I write a new term, it goes down by 1. Let's just follow the x's here, right? x to the 7th, x to the 6th, x to the 5th, x to the 4th. It's decreasing by 1, x cubed, x squared, x to the 1st. That's just x, but x to the 1st, and then x disappears, okay? So... Now, why did the x disappear? You were like, well, x to the first, well, x to the zero, okay, is just one, okay? So that's why that's not there. So now if you notice, y, as x is decreasing, y is increasing, okay? So here, this first term, it's really y to the zero, okay? Because y to zero is just one. And now y uh, is increasing, this term is increasing, while well, this term is decreasing. So y to the first, y to the second, y cubed, y to the fourth, y to the fifth, y to the uh, sixth. But let's notice the exponents here, okay? So here it's seven. This, These two right here, when you add up six and one, it's still seven. Five and two, still seven. Four and three, still seven. Three and four, still seven. Two and five, still seven. Here, this is a one, six and one, still seven. And then we have seven by itself. So you can see that we're constructing a pattern here, okay? Uh, and this is the pattern that's generated when you are expanding a binomial, okay? When you do that, uh, you have this particular pattern. Now, let's look at the coefficients now, because this is really interesting. So here, our first one, let me use a different color, is 1, and then we have 7, and then we have 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and then 1. So I'm going to write uh, these out this way. Okay, so let me change colors. So here we have 1, 7, uh, 21. Uh, we have 35 and 35. And then if you notice here, we have the same numbers right here, 1, 7, and 21. We're going basically, there's symmetry to this, right? So we have 21, 7, and 1 with the 35s in the middle. So you know, when you look at this, you're like, okay, there's some sort of pattern being generated. And there is absolutely a pattern being generated, not only with the coefficients, but with the power. So this is effectively uh, the binomial theorem, at least in terms of, um, you know, seeing what's going on. Okay, we haven't even defined the binomial theorem other than it's a theorem that such that when we do, we take something like x plus y to the seventh power, we're going to get this answer. All right, let's take a look at something called 
Pascal's triangle. And you learn about Pascal's triangle right off the bat when you're studying um, the binomial theorem. So let's take a look at it. Let me show you here. So you can see, it's we. Ha I'm going to explain exactly what the, the meaning of this is, but let's just take a look. We have one. All these ones are basically forming this triangle on the outside. Then we have one and one. Then we have one, two, one, one, three, three, one. So you can kind of see these patterns here, right? How um, these numbers kind of add up. You can see the. I don't want to get too thorough in here because this can be confusing. But just you just need to know this is Pascal's uh, triangle, right? And you can see there's an obvious connection to the numbers in this triangle. Okay, and of course in my uh, full comprehensive lessons and stuff, I really get into Pascal's triangle because you do need to understand it. But you just need to know that there is something called Pascal's triangle when we're talking about the binomial theorem. And this is, it continues on and on and on, but this is it. Okay, but what does it mean though? Let's interpret that. Well, these, when we look at the triangle this way, okay, uh, basically from a horizontal standpoint, these indicate the power. This is the rows, okay? So this is row, we start off with row zero, okay? So row zero. So the second one down here is row one. This top one is not row one. And this number, zero, one, and two, right here we're looking at row two, this is the power of the binomial. So if we have x plus y squared, okay, this is a, uh, the power here of this binomial is two. So we would want to be looking at row two of the Pascal's triangle. Okay, so here we have one, two, one. That's row two of, Bas of Pascal's triangle. Now, if you look at one, two, one, what does that mean? Well, this, these are the coefficients. These are the coefficients in when we expand this out. So if we take x plus y and square it, uh, square it, and that's what I did here, x plus y squared, that's x plus y times x plus y. We can use the FOIL method. And when you do the answer, we have x squared plus 2x squared plus y squared. But what are the coefficients? 1, 2, and 1. Okay, 1, 2, and 1. Again, this was row 2. That's the power. And here is 1, 2, and 1, 1, 2, and 1. So Pascal's triangle tells us the coefficients of um, our binomial expansion. And that's the way you would want to uh, look at it. Okay, so let's take a look at this answer. Here's our coefficients. Uh, this was, again, what? x plus y to the seventh power, right? So I'm like, okay. If I knew, if I know the coefficients, okay, I could just write them out, and then I could just go ahead and just go, that's an x, uh, x to the seventh. This would be an x to the sixth, y to the first. I could just start... Uh, putting in the powers and just doing this part of it. That's not that difficult. But what is difficult is finding the coefficients. Okay, so when you're studying um, the binomial theorem, there's a whole, you know, formula on how you find the uh, coefficients. But let's go back to this problem. So here, x plus y to the seventh power. Let's see if we can find these coefficients at what row? What would be row seven, right? Because we're talking about uh, the seventh power. So let's go down here. And here's row zero, one, two, and you can just walk it down. And here is row seven. And look at Pascal's uh, triangle at row seven. It's one, seven, 21, 35, exactly what we had and what we expected, 21, seven, and one. And this course continues on, on and on and on. Now we can't write this thing out forever. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but there is something else I need to talk about. This is the first term, okay, when we write out our, our polynomial. This is the last term, the seventh term. So we always start with term zero. This is the first term. So if I wanted to know what is the first term, okay, and it's a little confusing, of this polynomial expansion, I'm sorry, this uh, binomial expansion of x plus y to the seventh, what is the first term? Well, this would be the first term. Okay, when we're looking at it in terms of the Pascal triangle. So I want this answer. Okay, which would be this second right here. So the answer to that question would be 7x to the 6, y to the first. Okay, so these are the type of questions that you're going to be asked. Okay, so, you know, you might be asked, what is the seventh term or the sixth term of this binomial expansion? 
Okay, they don't want the, you know, your teacher your, or the test or quiz doesn't want the entire answer. They just want the six terms. So, again, these problems can get quite challenging. But you need to understand Pascal's triangle, and there's more to it than what this is. But I just want you to focus in that these rows represent the coefficients, okay, of these binomial expansions. All right, and again, if you really, really want to learn this stuff, you got to check out my pre-calculus course and my full uh, lessons and stuff uh, on the binomial theorem, okay? All right, now, let's go down and check out this crazy formula. So here is our formula. And now, you know, looking at the uh, Pascal's triangle, we kind of figured out that problem. Let's just go back up here real quick. Um, okay, so if I said, okay, x plus y to the seventh, do this problem, one way you can basically approach it, if you had Pascal's triangle, okay, uh, available, right, and you knew it, you could just go like this. Let's just review this real quick. You could, you would first list the coefficients, okay? You'd go down there, row seven, you list the coefficients, and here's the coefficients. You're going to go to row seven of Pascal's triangle, and then you're going to say, okay, x plus y to the seventh, you're going to take this first variable, and you're going to put it to the highest power, seven, okay? And then you're going to add this down, and you're going to start walking this, walking down um, the x variable and increasing the y variable. So it's going to be x to the 6, y to the 1st, and always making sure that these add up to 7. And you're just going to continue to follow on with this pattern, and you would get the right answer. Of course, you have to put plus signs in here. So that's how you can use Pascal's triangle to do a problem like this. Okay, But again, you can see this triangle is getting pretty wide here. <laughs> We're only at row 7. What if I said row 70? find the 26th term of, of, of something. You know, it's now you need a gigantic triangle, right? So that's not practical. That's why we need this formula, okay? Now, how you use this formula, well, that's a whole different discussion, and uh, it's not that difficult, but we have to practice finding this right here gives us the coefficients, okay? And then this whole, you know, sigma, you know, expansion and everything else. You kind of pretty much have to understand exactly what's kind of going on here. It's not, it looks intimidating and it is, you know, sophisticated, but it's definitely not beyond your ability to learn. Okay, but you need this formula to do more challenging problems. Okay, like the Pascal's triangle works out pretty good when you have like, let's say the third, fourth, fifth uh, row and you have that triangle available. But to do a problem like this, let's say I say um, here is a binomial 2M, plus n to the 10th power, okay? Tell me the fourth term. Well, the only way you're going to know that is you're going to have to, you know, do this out the long way. You're going to have to literally multiply 2m plus n by itself 10 times. Can you imagine the amount of work that would be? It would be crazy amount of work to do. And then you would have to go ahead and answer this question. So we don't want to do that, okay? You need to be able to... Uh, specifically use these formulas here to figure out exactly what the fourth term is equal to. Okay, so um, again, that's why I said that binomial theorem, you know, it is like one little simple word, right? Oh, binomial theorem, it's, you know, it's about expanding binomials, but yeah, but the problems can get fairly challenging, and you definitely need to understand both the uh, Pascal's uh, triangle and, uh, you know, how that is incorporated with more, you know, because that is essentially, you know, that's all interrelated uh, in terms of the concepts here. But then you have to understand how to apply this formula, right? And this is, again, pretty sophisticated math. And if you're challenged by binomial theorem, that's perfectly normal, okay? I've been teaching math for decades. This is pretty, you know, challenging for most students, okay? So even if you're like a top student, you're like, boy, my brain hurts and trying to figure out these problems. Hey, that's uh, you know you're you're right on track. <laughs> the thing is, don't quit and really make sure you understand the foundations. And hopefully, that's what this video accomplished. So, if this was a good little review or introduction, if you learned something from it, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. Again, if you really truly want to, um, you know, master this. If you like my teaching style, then you want to check out my pre-calculus course. That's where I teach this uh, thoroughly. But um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, by the way, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. But again, my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.